The back rooms. You've been here before. Entity number 83, The Hermit. Index to Entity Threat Score. Danger, 3. Intelligence, B. Habitats, Majority. Image Caption, an artistic rendition of Entity 83. The Hermit is a nomadic humanoid creature of unknown origin. It lives in a shack about the size of a trailer that it carries on its back. The shack is made out of a material foreign to any well-known level, but it has properties similar to tin sheets, rotted wood, and dried bone. When deployed, the front quote-unquote lawn of the shack is adorned with bloodied sharpened sticks with skewered corpses of various entities found within the back rooms. Some of these corpses include a decapitated skin stealer, a hound impaled through the stomach, the large intestine of a human, the disembodied head of a strangler, a grossly oversized eyeball theorized to belong to a smiler, an unknown snake-like entity with purple scales and long, white hairs, assumedly an undocumented entity. The shack itself has two rooms, a dining room and a kitchen. The dining room consists of a large rectangular wooden table with a total of six chairs surrounding it, two chairs per length, one chair per width. All of these chairs are refurbished metal folding chairs, except for the chair on the left end, which is instead a large wooden throne, velvet cushions adorning the seat and back. The hermit usually sits in this throne for his meals, unless it has a guest of honor, in which case it moves one chair to the right, allowing the guest to sit in the throne. On the walls of the dining room are yet more trophies of other entities, including the wings of a female death moth, a blue feather, note, see entity number seven, a badge labeled Bojack, first response, and a popped balloon, see Entity 67. The kitchen, on the other hand, is a crude abomination of spare parts welded together in order to create something that can hypothetically be used to cook. The ramshackle cupboards are full of different plates and bowls made out of the same tin-like substance as the rest of the house. The cooling unit holds two gallons of almond water, two bushels of an unspecified herb, and at least four pounds of miscellaneous meats at all times. Behaviors. The hermit is uncharacteristically hospitable, often offering guests respite, complete with meals composed of cooked meat, later identified to be the flesh of various entities, and tea, a currently unknown plant brewed in almond water. It talks with a masculine, slightly Irish accent. It has an affinity for long, thoughtful conversations, especially on the topic of food. If allowed, the hermit will prattle on for hours about his favorite dishes to cook and serve to those it trusts. Every once in a while, the hermit can be found without its shack, roaming the various halls of the back rooms. Surveillance officers affiliated with the Meg have reported sightings of a creature matching the hermit's visual description in levels 1, 3, 5, and 7. Sightings of the hermit have yet to be documented at any level beyond 8, but it is wise to assume that the hermit has traveled there before due to its various trophies. Eyewitness reports of the hermit while roaming have described it as a quote-unquote cunning hunter. Various witness accounts say that, while hunting, the hermit uses a crossbow, a bone saw, and bear traps, and will hunt humans as well as other entities. The testimony of an armed Meg officer describes the hermit's hunting tactics in detail. The hermit stealthily tracks its prey, then strikes in quick bursts, either firing a crossbow bolt or dashing in at insane speeds to slash with its saw. After making an attack, it retreats back to the shadows before anybody can feasibly react. The hermit never seems to run out of ammo on its crossbow. 
and the bone saw is always sharpened. Biology. The hermit has a humanoid appearance, although it is significantly taller than the average human male. It wears a long, brown, patchy cloak that trails across the ground, and a dirty white mask in the shape of a large avian skull. It is currently unknown whether these two adornments are a part of the hermit's body or simply just clothing. The hermit, despite its human appearance and personality, is anything but... Surviving witnesses of the hermit's hunt state that it, quote, grows another pair of thin black legs, end quote, in order to chase down its prey. One particular witness recalls the hermit ejecting acid from its eye sockets, implying that it may be an arthropod behind its mask. However, many of these claims came from people suffering from symptoms of delirium and insanity, so the validity of these claims should be called into question. As deduced by the strangler head on a stake outside of the hermit's abode, it is theorized that the hermit has the ability to leave inescapable levels. More research must be done in order to either confirm or deny this notion. Discovery the hermit was first discovered by Meg Officer codename Moxie on a solo expedition of Level 5 on an expedition to retrieve sustainable resources. As Moxie approached the deployed shack, they were greeted by the hermit, who beckoned them inside, offering a meal. Below is the conversation had over dinner by Moxie and the hermit, recorded by Moxie's personal video recorder concealed in their jacket. Interview Log 09-09-2020 Begin Log 1922 Interviewer Meg Officer Codename Moxie Interviewee The Hermit Moxie This is a nice place you got here. Most people back at camp would kill for a house like this. The Hermit Indeed it is. I'll make some food. The Hermit ushers Moxie to a seat across from the throne and walks into the kitchen. Moxie, what are you making? The hermit, from the kitchen. That would be a personal secret. We would not want people spreading my recipes around, now would we? Silence for twenty-four seconds. Moxie looks at the trophies on the wall. Moxie, are those the wings of a death moth? A female, to be precise? The hermit, from the kitchen. Oh, so that is what those are called. I suppose so. Moxie, how did you get them? The hermit, from the kitchen. I hunt, mainly for ingredients, also for sport. Moxie notices the badge of Officer Bojack on the wall. Silence for twelve seconds. The hermit walks back into the room holding two identical plates of what appears to be hot tea and steak. The hermit, your meal is ready. Moxie, that was abnormally quick. The hermit, I have my methods. Enjoy. Moxie picks up a fork and knife and cuts into the steak. They wait for the hermit to take a bite first, then follow suit. Moxie, this isn't bad. What kind of meat is it? The hermit, I would be delighted to sit here and brag about my culinary skills, but revealing my secrets may detract visitors. Moxie, visitors? The hermit, I enjoy welcoming visitors into my home. It is a symbol of hospitality and friendship, is it not? Besides, you have been my best guest so far. All of the others have had below-average conduct. Moxie glances at the badge again, then takes a sip of tea. Moxie, wow, this is exceptional. I've never even tasted tea like this before. Seriously, what's your deal? The Hermit, I am truly flattered, but I have made it clear that my secrets shall remain just that. Secrets. Moxie, do you at least have any tips on how to prepare food? The hermit pauses. The hermit. Of course. The key is to go with what you feel is right, not what any recipe calls for. At the end of the day, it's your meal, so you have to make it your own. Otherwise, you cannot call yourself a true chef. Moxie. I see. The hermit. Oh, and do not forget, choice of ingredients is vital. No amount of natural talent in the kitchen will save a meal with poorly selected components. Experiment with new ideas and build your style of cooking from there. Moxie glances at the hermit's plate. It's completely empty, save for the cup that once held the tea. 
Moxie. Well, I should be off. I've had my share. The Hermit. Are you positive? I had plans for dessert. Moxie. Trust me, I'd love to stay and chat, but I have people back at my settlement that are probably wondering where I am. It's been much longer than I intended to stay out. The Hermit. What a shame. Come back soon, and tell all your friends to stop by. Moxie. I'll be sure to. Moxie stands up and offers a handshake to the hermit, who accepts without hesitation. As they walk out, Moxie slips a small sliver of meat into their pocket for inspection. End log. 1927. Upon Moxie's return to Base Alpha, the meat served to them was deduced to be that of a skin stealer. Moxie suffered from minor stomach aches and diarrhea for the next 48 hours. However, Moxie did not feel hungry for the next seven days after their encounter with the hermit. Any attempts for Meg to replicate the dish were unsuccessful. Moxie now regularly visits the hermit for meals and conversations. Do's and don'ts. Do. While visiting the hermit for dinner, be as respectful as possible, try to clean your plate, show proper manners at the table. While being hunted by the hermit, bring a partner to watch your blind spots, lure it to other creatures to provide a distraction, stay on the defensive and attempt a retreat. Don't. While visiting the hermit for dinner, don't ask too many questions about the food's origins, come off as rude or unruly, attempt to touch any of its trophies. While being hunted by the hermit, don't attack without any sort of plan, underestimate the mobility of your predator, approach if tired, weary, or insane. Addendum 10 15 2020. It has been roughly a month and a half since Moxie started routinely visiting the hermit. As of late, Moxie has refused to record their conversations with the hermit. Other Meg officers and wanderers have noticed Moxie's skin get paler and gaunt as they visit the hermit more and more often. It has been 17 days since Moxie has last been seen eating anywhere other than the hermit's shack. Medical monitors have revealed Moxie's heart rate to be roughly 30% lower than the average human's at rest. However, Moxie's personality is unchanged. Private, name removed for privacy, has made the executive decision to stealthily place an audio recording device on the inside of Moxie's jacket. The following conversation was recorded during Moxie's 13th visit to the Hermit. Interview Log 10-15-2020 Begin Log 1859 Interviewer Meg Officer Codename Moxie Interviewee, the Hermit, the Hermit. Well, if it isn't name removed for privacy, let me guess, back for a bit more food? Moxie, you know it, I just can't live without it. The Hermit, I'm flattered, coming right up. Footsteps, silence for 12 seconds. Moxie, say, that's a new trophy, how'd you manage that? The Hermit, far, oh, that. That one was simple. A clean stake at the legs, and it can barely move anymore. After that, it is easy pickings. Moxie. Neat. You know, I'm not too shabby with the rifle myself. The Hermit. Far. Oh? Moxie. You better believe it. Before I got dragged into this hellhole, I used to hunt all kinds of vermin. I had this old cabin back in location removed for personal privacy. One of the coziest places I can remember. Reminds me a lot of this place now that I mention it. The Hermit. Far. That sounds like a nice place. I'm sure you are skilled at shooting common rodents, but do you think you could handle beasts that roam these halls? Moxie. I wouldn't be here if I couldn't. Footsteps. Plates rattling. The creaking of a chair. The Hermit. I like your style. You know, if you would ever want to join me on one of my hunts, I would be happy to have you. Moxie. You really think I can keep up with you? You've taken on death moths by yourself. The Hermit. As long as you stick with me, you will be fine. You can cover my back and I will cover yours. Moxie. I guess that's true. What do I even have to worry about? The Hermit. Precisely. Sips. Silence for nine seconds. Moxie. I've been meaning to ask you something. The Hermit. And what might that be? Moxie. 
Who are you? Like, before all of this madness happened, all of us were completely different. I ran a country club, for God's sake. But now, I'm trapped in this infinite goddamn prison. I used to be somebody. But now, I'm just a loner, biding his time until he inevitably dies. So, before you got trapped here like the rest of us, who were you? Silence for six seconds. The Hermit. Name redacted for personal privacy. Sometimes, you just have to forget your past. It drags you down. If you dwell on it for too long, it will tear you to pieces while you are too busy looking for the answers to pointless questions. As long as the past lingers in the back of your head, you cannot fully focus on the present. That is one of the many reasons why I am such a proficient hunter. I refuse to let my past cloud my thoughts and interrupt my hunt. Moxie. I guess you're right, as always. Thanks for the advice. The Hermit. It is my pleasure. Would you like to stay for dessert? Moxie. I'd love to, but I probably shouldn't. Those wusses back at HQ are probably wondering where I've been. The Hermit. That makes sense. Take care. Please consider my hunting offer. It would be a joy to have you. Moxie. I'd love to go out on a hunt with you. Just pick the time and place by next visit. See you. End log, 1909. The feed was interrupted three minutes after the conversation ended. Upon Moxie's return, they refused to speak with private name redacted for personal privacy, nor any other officer. Moxie entered their quarters and did not leave for 46 hours. Upon their eventual exit, they seemed much happier than normal.